Hey gamers, what's up? It's your cyber girl, Raven. So you want a gamer girl, huh? You want a you want a fucking gamer girl who's gonna game with you on your games and on your gaming consoles? Yeah, I bet you do, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, don't look much further because I think I found one for you guys that you're really gonna like. At least I know I am. I'm literally obsessed. I love this manga already and I will tell you why. But first I wanted to say I think I'm gonna start calling my Monday uploads Cyber Monday. So yeah, welcome to Cyber Monday guys. <laughs> If you are new to this channel, thank you so much for clicking on my face. I really appreciate it. And if you are not new to the channel, welcome back. As always, some of the content that I will be showing in this video are not safe for YouTube. So the uncensored version will be on Patreon if you would like to check that out. On today's episode of What the F*** Did I Just Read? I'm reviewing this. The girl in the arcade. So I was in a Barnes and Noble and I was just kind of looking around for something that I wanted to read and review and you know, whatever, become obsessed with. And I do think I found it. Let me introduce you to our brand new game obsessed waifu, Nanara-san. Nanara is absolutely adorable. She is the complete otaku gamer girl of your dreams. And when I say gamer girl, I mean like she's literally obsessed with games, which is fucking awesome. And we first meet her when she's playing the crane game. She is so obsessed with winning at this game that she absolutely demands that our main character helps her beat the crane game, which quickly becomes every game in the arcade. Now our main character is an employee of the arcade. He's a high school student who works at the arcade and he is such a fucking background character that his nickname is literally Mob. He's your average otaku boy, you know, the same one that's in every single rom-com, manga, or anime. He is such a background character that we literally don't even know his name, just like someone's senpai. Hmm. There's literally a scene where he has his yearbook and his name is just completely Ooh. blocked out by a highlight on the book. I mean, it literally took all the way until the second volume to get any real info on this guy other than the fact that he's good at gaming, which hello, he works at an arcade. And before we even get that information, we're introduced to a brand new character. That's right, the dreaded childhood friend. Not only is she very cute, but she's also very clingy and possessive over our main character, who she claims she has no feelings for. She's kind of evil, and she plays more games with people's feelings than she does at the arcade. As you guys know, I love rom-com manga and anime. I love it so much, and I'm always up for a good love triangle, but I'm so sick of the mob main character. Like, there's just nothing remarkable about him at all. Like, he's not a little bitch, but he's just kind of there. So I'm on the second volume right now, but I'm only about two chapters in so far, and just in these two first chapters alone, I've gotten more info on the main character than I did in the entire first volume. And once again, the only thing that we do get about him is that he's good at games. And speaking Speaking of games, this manga is really cool because it does a really good job at like describing games and how to play them. There's like little tips in there on like how to play games and stuff. I don't know, it's cool. And it's actually the main character who's describing them. So we get all of this gaming info and he is describing these games to Nanara-san. And I mean, I was never a teenage boy, but it seems like every teenage boy's dream to like, you know, teach a girl how to play your favorite games. Anyway, the art is absolutely stunning, which is all thanks to the illustrator MG Me, who the writer actually recruited after 10 years of waiting to find the right illustrator. I guess the writer's editor introduced the two of them and they actually bonded over their love of arcades. So it just really seems like the right fit. 10 years seems like a long time to be waiting on a story, but I mean, it seems like it was the right decision based on the fact that the art is just absolutely flawless. I really hope that if this manga gets an anime adaptation that whoever the studio is for it produces it ends up doing it justice because between the character design and the arcade and all the lights and stuff, it has some serious potential of being one of the prettiest spicy anime adaptations I've ever seen. And yes, I said spicy. Yup, that's right. Did you think it wasn't gonna be there? Of course it was. It was there from the very first page. This manga gets wild as it puts the characters into the world of the games. There's a scene where they're playing this zombie shooter game and one of the zombies takes Nanara-san's shirt and her titty just pops out, bro. It's crazy. <laughs> And then they're playing this game that's basically Mario Kart. By the way, she looks like Bowser in those panels, and I'm like, <sighs> and you know the squid that 
squirts ink onto your screen so that when you're driving, there's like ink all over your screen you can't see. So that squid actually becomes like a giant fucking tentacle monster. And yeah, um, you can probably imagine how that goes. <laughs> and then there's a scene where she's playing DDR and she's dancing so absurdly rough, I'm talking literal sweaty ass cheeks, bro, that her skirt literally comes off. Like how? And the main character actually has Bruh. to hold it up. Cause like, there's like a crowd of people watching her play cause she's playing so well. But yeah, her skirt just like falls off. It's like, what? And that's just to name a few, but literally in almost every freaking panel, her panties are just showing and it's wild. But aside from that, like I said, I'm only on volume two, so I'm not that far into the series yet. Aside from all that stuff, it's actually pretty wholesome. Pretty early on, you can see Nanara-san developing feelings for the main character, and it's actually really cute. So I really hope to see more about that budding relationship. And in turn, I hope that we get to see more information about the main character. I'm going to keep reading volume two, and it seems like we're really getting to know the main character quite a bit more in this volume. So hopefully we get to know him more and not just the underside of Nanara-san's skirt. Honestly, throughout this manga, you can see that Nanara-san is a very competitive person and has a genuine love for gaming and seeing her excitement whenever she's close to winning a game or whenever she does win a game is enough to keep me reading. I hope you guys check it out because Nanara-san is totally waifu. I love her so much. Boo team childhood friend. Get the f*** out of here. And yeah, let me know if you guys end up reading this one or if you guys want me to just kind of give you updates on it. I'm probably going to want to talk about it a little bit more. So I am also thinking about starting streaming again. I'm probably going to be doing a bunch of different things. So please consider following me on Twitch. I will probably start this month, but check out my Twitter to just kind of keep updated on that because I will be posting a schedule or at least some times that I'll be streaming. So yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing if you liked this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.